This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. That's so mighty here today. And Lord, let every word that is spoken and every word that is heard be all to your glory and just for each one of us. Amen. Amen. So in my kitchen, I have a little table that is right in front of some French doors. And when I work there, sometimes I get a little distracted very quickly on my swirl. So I can look to the side and I look out and I see this beautiful little scene. So let me paint that picture for you. It's a little red barn, a little white fence, it's some beautiful green grass, and there's even a brook that runs through it a small, tiny little pasture. And that's what I thought of last week when Father Joe was talking and reminding us that this beautiful place that we live in is a pasture where the living water of Jesus flows through it. And we are all always invited to drink of it. But there's two parts. So we get filled up with the living water and we pour it out. And Father Joe reminded us that when we were talking about it, describing St. Paul's, we talked about that in that pasture, four things happen. We grow. We have peace. We rest. And we experience love. So what I thought this morning is I'll just share how each of those things have, I have experienced myself, and I invite you to think about your own story. How here have you experienced all those four things? And then I have a quick story about how we're pouring it out. And I invite you to share and think about how are you pouring it out? How is God teaching you how to do that? Because we all have our stories, and our stories connect. My story connects to your story, which connects to his story. And no matter how broken you think, or how dark you think your story is, or how happy you think your story is, or how slow your story is, or how exciting your story is, you just don't know how God will use each other to encourage each other and draw us closer to Him in the process. Now, I used to think that in order to pour myself out, in order to do what God wanted me to do, that those acts had to be big, significant, famous almost. I had to change the world. I have opened 17 hospitals around the world. And I have found, even recently, that's not the case. In order for us to pour ourselves out, we only need to hear what the Spirit is talking to us about and then act on it for someone else. I'll share about that in a minute. So first, filling up. Were you thirsty when you came here? I was. Ken was. Our family was. And as most of you know, it took the spirit to finally use Emily, who was eight at the time, to get us here. <coughs> but he was insistent. And I thought at that time that in order to take care of my family, I had to hold on to my life this tight. And if I let go even just a little bit, everything would fall apart. And I did it the hard way. It didn't work. Month after month, it didn't work. So he brought us here to him, to all of you to this pasture, and he began transforming me as he's transforming you from the inside out through just the living water of Jesus. And as I got filled up over the years, I've experienced the things we very described ourselves as, growth, peace, rest, and love. So he grew me. He gave me ministries to serve in. He gave me new responsibilities in those ministries. Sometimes if you think I'm doing the same ministry year after year after year, just look. It's probably 
taking you deeper into that ministry. He's maturing you in that ministry. He's making it ever more significant. He gave me new hallways to walk in and new doors he would open up. And I thought he opened a door and I'd just run through it. And he showed me, no, child, no. I open the door, you take a step, and then you wait for me. And then you take that next step. I wanted to run, but he's like, wait. He wants to see that I will wait for him. So he grew me, and he gave me peace. Through prayer, I find peace. Through my faith deepening here, I find peace. Through his miracles, I find peace. And all oh, that that I had that tight grip on, I've loosened it. I'd love to tell you that my head is completely wide open and I let it all go every day, but I don't. I still have a little bit. He's working on that. He gave me rest. Can you experience the rest here? I bet you have. And you can. And even if we're busy, we may not be tired, we may not be fatigued, and we may not have that overwhelmed, tired. We have rest. Because it's safe here. We're safe with each other to find rest. So he grew me, he gave me peace, he gave me rest. He gives me love. He has shown me true love here. I love when I hear my family laugh. I love when I talk and I walk with each one of you. I love when we cry together or we pray together, or when we work together, or when we freeze together doing free coffee in December, or when we minister to someone else. There is love. We see the mighty hand of God together. It's nothing short of a miracle. I don't know why we think we need to hold on tightly to things. But the hand of God is indeed here. And the miracles are here. With each one of you. And our lives together. God's love. So if that's how he's filled us up. So think about how he's filled you up. So how does he pour us out? He teaches us how to pour us out. It's easy to say, how will you use yourself today? But he has to teach us that. He has to show us that. I don't think we instinctively know how to do that all the time. And as I said, he's teaching me it doesn't have to be significant in terms of bigness. It's significant to him. So whatever he asks us to do, and when we act on it, only he knows how he leaves those stories in his kingdom and how what I do impacts you and how what you do impacts me or someone else. So quick story. So Friday, this past Friday, I was going to the grocery store. And I'm really trying to be intentional about everything I do, so I pray. Lord, which grocery store should I go to? I have two choices right in front of me. I live in Newtown, I really care Lucy's or Big Y. I face that same decision every day. And so he goes, go to Carol Lucy's. And I said, yes, but what I wanted to get was probably on sale at Big Y. You probably didn't know that, so I probably should go to Big Y. Why do we do that? We, we pray for his guidance and then kind of talk him around it. Maybe he doesn't know all the details. But we do. But he's like, okay. He was insistent. Go to Carol Lucy's. So I went. I pulled into Carol Lucy's. I'm like, now what, Lord? Because he'll learn to go to the door and wait. He goes, someone will need you. I'm like, okay. I'm on a mission. So I get all my stuff. I run into the store. I go right into the produce aisle. And I practically ran over three people looking for that one tender soul that needed me to drop to their knees in Paralusies and pray for them. They needed Jesus. And I'm not that kind of person. I don't I don't do that very naturally, but I figured this must be a major mission. And it didn't happen. I bumped into two people. I said, excuse me, looking to see if that was it. It wasn't. And so what did I do? I went on my shopping trip. I was like, okay, maybe I just needed to be obedient to comfort. 
So I go into the next aisle, I pick up a $3 item, and I start on my groceries. I pick this up, I pick that up, and I'm debating whether or not I should buy that $3 item the entire rest of my store. Ken knows this. I just all of a sudden debate that. Should I buy it? Is it cheaper someplace else? I, it's just random. So I come around to the front of the store, and I'm like, I'm going to put that $3 item back. I had forgotten all about why God sent me there. It didn't matter anymore. I was busy shopping. So I come around, and I'm literally coming around the corner, and this woman looks at me and says something to me. And I smiled, and I went on. And two seconds later, I realized she had said, thank you for wearing your happy sweater today. And I stopped. <coughs> Humbled and careless. <coughs> So I had a yellow sweater on. And that morning, what I didn't tell you is when I had looked in my closet in my sea of black and white, <laughs> I saw this sweater. And it was just on my heart to grab it. Wear it. I never wear it. And so I said, right then and there, and I looked around, and of course, the woman was gone. And I said, God, is it that simple? Is that the simple obedience of pouring ourselves out? That maybe she was blessed by she needed a little pick-me-up of a yellow sweater and I just needed to be obedient to be that for her? Because it's that simple. You don't know her story, but you were just a little piece of what I was doing. So, I realized that he does use us one connection at a time, one story at a time, one piece of the world at a time. So my friends, I'd love to be with you in this pasture. You each have grown me. You've given me rest. You've given me peace. You've given me love. And I encourage you to partake all that you can from this beautiful, safely shepherded pasture. And I promise you, you'll grow. You'll have peace. You'll have rest. And you'll have love. <coughs> so drink all you want from the living water of Jesus. There's plenty to fill up on. And there's plenty to pour out. And if you act and if you listen, will use you in a significant way every time. <coughs> he is your audience of one just as he is mine. So I thank you for walking with me and loving me and being with me in this beautiful place. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you that however we may thirst, whatever we may need to satisfy our souls, you offer it freely and abundantly in Christ. So we drink deep of the living water and as we draw from your wells, we seek to pass the cup to others who like us are thirsty for your grace. Amen. Mm -hmm.